Hello, welcome to ResoCoder. In this tutorial, you're going to learn everything you need to know about singletons in Unity. Singletons can be pretty hard to understand, but don't worry, because I'm gonna do my best to explain everything in detail. What is a singleton? Simply said, it's a class which can be instantiated into just one object. Not two, not three, just one. And why do we even need singletons? Well, singletons are pretty useful when you want to retain an object for the whole time of playing a game. Whether you are building a simple or complex game, sooner or later you'll find yourself creating some kind of manager game object, which is gonna hold all kinds of data and functions regarding the game. Like for example, code for handling music, scene switching or ads. Because this game object manages such important and basically scene-independent things, because hey, you are likely to play music, whether you are currently in the menu or in-game, so because of that, you want this game object to persist even when you switch between scenes. This is where singletons come into play. I've already created two scenes, first and second, and a simple UI, because I don't want to bore you with stuff that's unimportant to the main theme of this tutorial. As I've previously said, you're likely to store some data inside your Singleton Manager script. For simplicity, we're gonna be storing just one simple integer. Its value will be displayed in this text right here. Where it says zero, this is gonna display the value of our integer. So this is the first scene, just simple text here and a button which when you click on it's gonna take you to the second scene and the second scene looks very similar it just has a button to go to the first scene now let's create a persistent manager script class which will be singleton meaning it can be instantiated only once so create new c sharp script persistent manager script and inside this script we want to have public static persistent manager script instance which is going to be a property with public get and private set and i'm going to explain what this is actually going to do in just a bit so there's going to be only one instance of persistent manager script at all times we want to store that instance inside a static property called coincidentally instance why is this property static well, whenever something is static, it's basically tied to the whole class and not to just one instance of a class. It makes perfect sense for this instance property to be static since also the one and only instantiated object of persistent manager script, which this property is going to refer to, is also kind of tied to the whole class. That's the purpose of singletons after all. And private set is here because we don't want other scripts, other classes to be able to erase this instance. We just want them to be able to get it. We want to set the instance only from within persistent manager script class. Then we want to make the public int value, which is going to represent some kind of data which is stored inside this persistent manager script. In your game you can obviously store whatever you like and unlike the instance property this value field is tied to an object not to a whole class because it's not static then we want to create a method awake which is private void and inside here we are actually going to be setting the singleton instance property so if instance equals equals null then we want to set the instance to this and I am going to explain what this actually does in just a little while. So instance equals this and we want to specify that we do not want to destroy the game object that this persistent manager script is located on. So we are going to call don't destroy on load and we want to specify the game object which we do not want to get destroyed and it's a game object with lowercase g and game object means the game object which this persistent manager script is currently located on so 
what does this if statement actually do? So if instance is null, it means that if there is nothing stored inside the instance property, which in turn means that this code is running for the first time since the start of the game. Because if instance doesn't contain anything at all, meaning it's null, null is just another way of saying that it doesn't contain anything. So if it doesn't contain anything, we set it to contain something and that something is this. And what does this mean? Well, it means the current particular instance that this code is running in. Well, you see classes are like cookie cutters and instances of the class are like the actual cutout cookies. And we want to set the instance property to this particular instance, which means to the actual cookie. And the instance property is static, which means it's tied to the cookie cutter and not to the cookie itself. Hope this makes sense. I didn't get it at first as well, but you just have to get through it and eventually it's gonna click inside your head and you will get it just right. And then if instance is not null, so if instance already contains something, we want to destroy the game object that the persistent manager script is currently located on. So else destroy and we want to specify game object with lowercase g and I've already explained what this does. Cool. So if we go over this again, if there is nothing inside the instance property, we want to set the current particular instance to be contained inside this static instance property. And we want to specify that we do not want to destroy the game object on which the first ever instance of persistent manager script is located on. Then, if we are creating another instances of this persistent manager script, which means we are coming back to a scene where our manager game object is firstly located on, so it's gonna try to create the game object again. And in turn, the creation of the game object is also gonna create this persistent manager script again. But if it's already a second instance or a third instance or a fourth instance, this static instance is not gonna be null. And then we want to destroy all of the duplicate instances of persistent manager script, or we actually want to destroy their game objects. Basically, we want to keep the first and original instance at all cost. And we want to use the awake method here because it's called before the start method, which we want to use in another simple script. When the code inside that start method runs, we want to access the singleton instance and this way we can be sure that the instance property was actually assigned some object because awake is always called before start. So that's completely cool and now we already know how to create singletons and why they are useful. Let's create a simple scene manager script which is gonna use our previously created singleton instance of persistent manager script. So we are gonna create scene manager script we want to open it up in visual studio and we want to be using unity engine management and also unity engine.ui in this script we are going to be updating the text displaying the current value inside our persistent manager script and we are also going to be handling switching between scenes we want to create a public text variable called value text which is gonna refer to this text right here. We wanna create a start method, and inside this start method, we wanna write value text dot text equals persistent manager script dot instance, and here we are accessing this singleton instance, which is static. So we can simply call it just from persistent manager script class. We do not have to have a reference to the class itself because it's static. So persistent manager script dot instance dot value and we want to convert this integer to string. 
we are accessing instance type field without having to keep a reference to an object all over the place. The reference is kept only inside the class. This instance property is keeping track of our persistent manager script instance. So the reference is kept only inside the class and we can access it without any hassle or clutter. That's the beauty of singletons. And we also want to switch between scenes. First we should add all of our scenes to build and you can do so by going to file, build settings and then you just want to add open scenes. You want to open the first scene then second and click on add open scenes and I've already done that. So now we want to create a public void, go to first scene and inside we want to call scene manager dot load scene and we want to load the scene called first. And in this tutorial, we also want to increment the value inside our persistent manager script instance. So persistent manager script dot instance dot value plus plus, which is going to increment it. Nice. Then we want to create a public void go to second scene, which is going to be doing just the same thing. The only difference is that we aren't going to be loading the first scene, but the second scene. So the argument to load scene method is going to change to be second. Now that we have that, all we need to do is to create a game object persistent manager, which is going to hold our persistent manager script. We're going to create this object only inside the first scene, because it's obviously going to persist through multiple scenes. So create empty persistent manager and we want to drag the persistent manager script onto this game object. We also want to create a scene manager game object, one for each scene. So create empty scene manager and drag the scene manager script onto this game object. We want to assign the value text right here to the same named field inside this script. So we want to drag it onto here and we want to do the same thing inside the second scene. And I've already created the scene manager game object here. And we just want to drag the scene manager script inside this game object. And we want to assign the value text to the value text field inside this script. So that's done. And now just let's test if everything works. We want to switch to the first scene because that's where our persistent manager game object is located. And let's press on play. And it's actually not going to work because I have forgotten to assign values to the button on click events. So just drag scene manager onto this on click. And we want to select function, go to second scene. So now let's test it for real. So I press go to second and as you can see don't destroy unload contains persistent manager. So it's obviously not gonna get destroyed. And we go to the second scene. This changes to one and the persistent manager is persisting, which is really nice. And as you can see, it really contains one when then we want to go to the first contains two, three, four, five, six, seven, or seven, eight, nine, and 10, which is completely awesome if you ask me. And as you can see, we don't have any duplicate persistent manager objects created. If I were to go into the persistent manager script and delete this or just comment this out, if it would not destroy the new instances, it would just keep on creating new and new instances of this persistent manager script class. And in turn, it would create also persistent manager game objects. So now with that commented out, let's test it. And it's actually gonna work. It's just gonna be really cluttered. So go to second. All right, no persistent manager in here. But when we go to the first, there is our persistent manager. But also this scene contains a persistent manager, which is not cool in my opinion. 
it's not gonna break the game, but why do that when you can prevent that? Go to second, go to first, and this is only gonna contain one persistent manager script extra because this persistent manager script, which is not inside the don't destroy unload, is not set to don't destroy unload, so it's actually gonna destroy unload because this instance here is assigned to something so it's not null so it doesn't call the don't destroy unload on this game object here because that if statement actually doesn't run so thank you for watching this tutorial i hope that it helped you if it did give this video a like and also share it if you don't want to miss any new videos then be sure to subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button to make sure you get notified and see you in the next video.